Hello YouTube and welcome to the Rise of Icelandic Football here with HK. This is episode 32 of the series. And the series is going along quite nicely. We are progressing well. As you can see, we are definitely dominating in our own um, in Iceland. But as we now know, after coming from episode 31, we still are having trouble in the Champions League to get out of the group stage. It's nice to reach the group stage now, and that is all. Um, but unfortunately for us, it is... Uh, Becoming a problem that we have fought about a long time. As you can see, Robert is still a oh, Roberto, I should probably say, still a hot prospect, and Flamen is our key player. Um, but we've had a long think about how we haven't got out of the group stage, and so with that in mind, we have made some changes here at the club. Nothing drastic, and I will admit this hasn't been a transfer window where we spent like last year. Um, but at the same time, it is also. Um, we put we we brought in some people as well. Um, if we go to the transfer history for this season, um, this is what's happened so far. We only made one massive sell. We got a couple of loans out. Um, I was gonna say, if you these guys know that we sold Ruben Nev Melvin Neves. Um, it happened on stream. I'll go for this one first. It doesn't need a mention. Melvin Neves was very upset at the club, as you can see. Thirty four is you know some doubts over his ability. Um, he was getting quite upset, quite down, and the rest of the um, rest of the team were like, look, Nevers wants to leave, he's a legend here at the club, you gotta let him go. I didn't want to, because I wanted him to play for Iceland, but unfortunately, when Empoli gave me 160K and he was only worth 120 on dead run day, we did sell. Um, so, Ruben Nevers, and well, Ruben Nevers, if only it was Ruben Nevers, could you imagine? We would not have sold for 160K. But Melvin Nevers, an absolute sensation for us. He played so well up until last season when we didn't need him. And then he's now playing in the Serie B, which is about his level, and it's not too bad. Um, if we move forward, though, um, and we've seen all the rest of these, back to this season, we've only made the two signings, and we've only made one sale. Now, the reason we have sold Ivo Tomic to West Brom, and there was some bidding war going on here. Um, we sold, oh, we bought Ivo for two mil or something like that. Um, as you can see, now rated only 56, right? So we're selling players on that are not really good enough for us for decent profit now, and it's pretty good. Um, the main reason we sold him on was obviously um, the money was quite good for the deal. Like, we bought him for 2.7, sold him for 4.5 with um, some clauses where they have to pay us out, and we get 50% of whatever they sell him on for next, which is quite good as well. Um, thing is, Ivo was never really playing first in, first out, first choice left back. Um, and he wasn't growing too much. He grew a little bit, but not too much. Did love his determination and his physicals. Um, but bidding was started. It started like a meal from Dynamo. Then Dynamo got up to like three, and so did a couple of others. And they weren't going above three. And then I started accepting three on deadline day because I'd thought about it. Um, and Boric Sen is now going to start at left back when we play this formation. We'll get into that in a second. But Boric Sen, I reckon, at left back is now probably our best choice. Um, bit more physically capable and determination and mentally slightly better and has obviously got slightly better technical as well. It's just that slight bit better. Um, which does mean that if we're gonna play him at left back, we were going to um, have three left backs then. As Brooks said was only a backup right back. Um, he's Brooks now ready and wants first team football as well and I'm not gonna sell him. He's now played for Germany as well, which kinda shows you that he does have the pedigree to grow into quite a good player. Um, so to sell Tomic on for 4.5 mil to make 6 mil um, long term, I thought we were never going to get another bid for him. Um, I was tempted to just sell Lucas Lopvat, but Lucas Lopvat is only getting off over 400k. Lucas Lopvat's happy to be a backup player. He's also very good to have, and he's not too far away from being Icelandic as well, which helps us. That gets us into the ins now, um, and the big in is Jonasson Alt. Now, we bought Jonasson Alt in, and of course, as soon as I show you a player, all down your nose. We bought Jonasson Alt in for 5.25 mil outright. He had a Eight mil release fee. I uh, offered um, offered three. They said seven. Offered four. They said five point two five, and I said deal. Pretty much how that went, and was pretty quick. Um, playing se playing as a centre back stopper, you can see he definitely can play that role very well. Good, good header, good marking, decent headering and tackling at six foot four. With very good physicals. Um, he got great jumping reach. A little bit slow, um, but not too bad. Great determination. He's very driven, which is what I love in a centre back. Um, Coaches do rate him and reckon he's going to grow. He's our second best centre back at the club with Yag Yag. Um, Yag Yag is not coming up on that list for whatever reason. Um, but can also play at um, DM and right back when needed. Um, but definitely a good um, 
centre back for us. Can play ball playing centre back. Just needs better vision. Um, but for us in the one system, he is definitely playing as a stopper. Um, and we'll show you the system in a second. We brought him in one because we are going to be playing certain systems in the future where Yagi won't need to play centre back. Um, Revy Revy Roger was another one. I was like, well, if we're playing a certain system. We need a backup Cam now to Gunnison just in case he goes down injured because we're now going to be playing with two up top in certain games. Uh, so I need a striker that can play centre attacking mid. Now, Revy Roger was out of contract at Finewood and someone I've been scouting for a long time. Um, and it came up and said, look, I am running out of contract. I would be interested in joining a new club if you want to offer me a free contract. I said, yeah, not a problem. It's fairly cheap for a rotation, 14K is cheap for me. Um, I said, not a problem. Can play complete forward attack as well. Um, and can play centre attack and bid very well. Look at the, um, the stats. I, mean, I just love his physical. Look at his physical and go, wow. Uh, but five foot nine is pretty good. Um, got good, good strength at five foot nine as well. Um, and across the board, just looks sensational. Um, then once we signed a pre contract, they said, look, for a mill, you can have him. And I said, you know what? We've got the transfer budget for a mill. It's worth getting him in for pre season at the start of the year. Or else we're just going to wait until July. Um, but it also means that he can be in here for the Champions League. Now, um, for the start of the Champions League, where we may not need him. But that's where we get onto our systems um, now. So as you can see, the 4 2 3 one is still one of our systems. Um, nothing changed there. I went back, watched the live stream, didn't watch it in full, the live stream of the Champions League, and went and watched back Chelsea and um, Napoli. And I feel like at home, the 4 2 3 one is quite a good formation to play because it plays to our strengths. And at home, we seem to play quite well. Unfortunately, when we're away, um, we do get hit a lot on the break in a controlled system. So what I'm thinking is, is we switch to this for, um, system here in the 4 one two one two. Now, if I was going to do a quick pick, I've set this up. Um, that would be where we lined up. And as you can see, Alt would actually go in the centre back and Yag Yag goes in the DM, which is his preferred formation. Um, if you can see by the number, um, by the player roles, um, anything over three, three star is a star player um, for us. Um, don't get scared by Wagner, it's because Wagner's playing wing-back attack. If I move Wagner to um, probably like full-back attack, he would probably go up to three-star. Um, we might just keep it on that as well. It doesn't really matter. They do the same sort of thing. They still bomb on. Um, it's fine. Um, but as you can see, everyone playing in their third position. Um, if I played like centre-back on stopper, it's still the same for alt. Um, but we obviously play with ball-playing centre-backs when we play these sort of systems. Um, but as you can see, everyone here is over free start in that team when we get both our best strikers on the field with goodness and in behind. Um, I feel like if we can play on the break with our best players out there, we can definitely go and do jobs against the biggest sides in Europe away from home. And all we need to do is pick up one or two points. Like with one point, we are, we're out of the group last year. Two years before, we needed two points. We would have been out of the group. Um, we had chances where we were ahead in games away from home. We had chances against Chelsea until the penalty happened. Um, so I just feel like maybe playing on a counter system is not too bad, but it's not your typical counter system. Um, I'm not a fan of sitting back and going deeper and absorbing pressure and then hitting on the break. I don't like doing that as if I'm doing lower league saves, like from England lower tier all the way up. Um, I'll play on the counter for until like Sky Bet League 1 until I start implementing what I like. Um, instead, I've decided to do this. I'll give you a second look at it as I take a drink of coffee. Not even 8 a.m. here, and I'm up here making videos. These guys should be quite happy. Um, but as we are, we're still playing quite fluid and on a much higher tempo because obviously we're playing on the break. But what I've decided to do, it's not a normal countering system. I think our pressing game's quite good, so it's a counter pressing system where we're going to play much higher, use the offside trap, closing down much more, and really getting the opposition faces. We can stop the opposition playing at home, and because we are playing quite high and quite aggressive in terms of how we're pressing. Um, yes, that could leave us open at the back, but when the 4 2 3 1, we're still trying to do that. We're playing quite wide as well, so there's gaps to pick off between the lines. Playing 4 1 2 1 2 with a DM and two center mids and a center attacking mid, we're blocking up the lines in between the middle, forcing them out wide, which is fine for me. Um, and then we can press from there and win the ball. Um, what that does mean is that when we win it, we're going way more direct, exploiting through the middle. The wingers are bombing on as quickly as possible. And we're just trying to work it in the box. We're just trying to get our best players on the ball, which is Steven, Goodison, Flamen, Bonanine, right? And with those four on the ball, in the middle of the park, zipping it around nice and quick, I feel like we can break through teams quite well, um, very quickly. And so once we've hit it, we can go from defence and transition to attack like that. 
and probably create chances against bigger sides, which is quite good. Unfortunately, we can't really test out this tactic too much until we get to the Champions League. Now, I, looked, I used it in pre-season. We go for a pre few pre-season games as well um, where I did use this formation. And we didn't pump teams because we're playing teams that were worse than us. And so we always kept the ball more than them. But we didn't, we didn't lose with this formation at all. Um, what it also does mean is it gives Wagner and Burixen, who are quite good um, at getting up and down and crossing the ball, to get down, obviously, wing-backs um, uh, overlapping. And obviously can get balls into the box, which is good. The lucky last system is a system that I just decided to build because um, when... Um, until we get a right back in of uh, quality or decent enough backup, I'm still scouting for a right back. Um, it's just hard to find one for Jimmy. Um, we're going to play a 3 5 2 formation, very attacking. I think I'm only going to use this in games where we are well the better side. Instead of playing on a higher tempo, we're going to play controlled and quite normal, but obviously quite high and press the field. So it's a it's three, three um, centre backs on halfway and then our two centre mids. Um, just so there's not too much gap between our. Um, Lines obviously looking to keep the ball and retain possession and exploiting either side to get um, our wingers onto the ball. Our wingers are quite good, but we're still looking to work it into the box as well. Um, it just allows both strikers to be on the same field as well, get our both our best strikers, get Gunnison out there, and then obviously get um, both wingers out there um, as well. As Stein's now apparently a four star player, um, even though he hasn't grown too much. Um, and obviously, Kanan's Kanan uh, was tempted to sell Kanan at one stage, but he's growing um, and is now a star player and still like four and a half star on the left-hand side. Gunnarsson is also now a very capable left-hand side winger, um, which is good to have as a backup option there as well. So we're doing quite well in that department. In terms of up front, like because we're playing two strikers, that's where Revy Roger comes in. He can play Cam, he can play up front. Lukovic can obviously play there too. And we're obviously training Isberg to play up top as well, learning ever so slowly, but he will. Um, we'll only get better with game time. Um, unfortunately, he's only two star right now, but still a... Still the man of my dreams is King Isberg. Any excuse to look at him, he's a freak. We do love him. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into some preseason stuff. Um, for most of the League Cup, we use the um, 4-2-3-1 because it is Iceland. I think we played 4-3-3 in the first game as it's shown. Um, as you see, we only won 2-0, but look at the um, possession. We limited to bugger all shots and dominated the game. Um, could have been way more, just didn't put our chances away. Uh, but in the 3 5 2, definitely looks like a very good formation to use at home in terms of in the league. Um, because when, if the, even if teams come and park it, we'll just get fight away through it. Um, we did use it here as well, I believe, in the first friendly. We did pump aside 11 0. Um, and Montreal Impact's one of the sides we use the 4 1 2 1 2. As you can see, we used the 4 1 2 1 2. Um, kept the ball still quite well, even in the counter system. Um, it created against them, which is great. Um, the second Flamengo highlighted what we wanted to do, I'm pretty sure. It might have been the first one. It's a while ago. Like I played these games yesterday, not even today, this morning. Um, so I'm trying to think here. I'm pretty sure we win it. We just zip it around quickly. Um, it might make a liar of me, but here we go. So like, Goodison gets on it, and it's just straight away, can we play, can we work it into the box? There we go. My alarm's telling me to wake up at 8 o'clock. It is 8 o'clock now. But as you can see, zipping it around, I may as well watch the first goal since we're here as well, if it would let me to go to field. And there we are. But it'll be another one where we just win the ball as well. Um, higher up the field. And there we go. A little bit lucky there. And then just straight away, where's the space? Can we hit people on the counter? There we go. Bonini's quite good at doing what he does. Flamen's there as well. And it's a good strike from the keeper. And Good strike from the keeper. Good um, good strike from Flamen. And there we go. Um, it's just a little bit more direct in the way we play as it is more direct. Um, it also means that instead of looking to zip it around and keep it in the middle of the park, they can play that ball into the channels, and we've got two very good strikers who are quite quick to get into the channels as well. Um, but that is what has happened so far. That's what we're thinking about. That's why we're thinking about going through forward for this season at least. Um, I'm very tempted to see how it goes in terms of um, the Champions League um, and seeing what playing away in that counter system can do. Um, I'm tempted to also use it at home against bigger sides as well. I also think there's maybe a potential to maybe play it on a controlled system um, and just drop the direct passing down for mixed. Um, but that's all that there needs to be said about the start of the season right now. Um, we're going to go in with what is our best sort of side um, against um, FH, and we are going to play the 4 3 one because it's a formation we know quite well. So Wagner, um, I'm going to give Yag Yag the start. Um, I still want him to learn how to play um, defense um, DM um, at the moment, a lot of players are wanted, and he's wanted by Man United as well. With and he, they're bidding like four mil for him. It's getting close to this point where we start negotiating. Um, Brian and Steven, Gunnarsson, Stein, Kane, and Flamen up top. Um, 
is a temptation to show you the three five two at the moment, but I feel like against FH you play on the break. Usually it might be a bit of suicide there, so we won't be doing that one there. I'm tempted to give Jonas a start just so you can you can see him, and we will. We'll just bring Yag Yag off the bench. Um, that's what we'll do. Um, in terms of the rest of that, that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of all that, um, we're going to play Robert because it's the final as well. Um, Yon's been keeping quite well um, and growing a little bit, which is great because we want Yon to do that. But more, um, Robert Murta is definitely go growing sensationally um, and is improving every time I look at him, which is good. He's been in great form. As you can tell, I only let two goals in five league games and didn't leave in too many in the Champions League apart from... Um, Apart from, no, he didn't keep the Chelsea game. Yon kept the Chelsea game. What are we on about? Anyhow, that's the team. Um, we're going to submit the team there. And we obviously selected substitutes outside the match because I just picked it from, I say the selections from pre-season. But there we go. They're playing a 4-3-3, which is the first time I've seen um, FH play 4-3-3, I reckon. Usually play 4-4-2, don't they? I don't know. It's too early in the morning to be thinking about it too much. I'm just going to tell them I have faith and I want to see more of the same and tell the boys and just get out there and do a performance. I'm uh, just going to send that one there. Um, for the league, we'll switch it up. Um, it's also important to make sure they learn all three formations fluently before the Champions League. Um, there, if there's a point where we desperately need to win a game in the Champions League, 3-5-2 is going to have to come out, uh, I think, and we're just going to have to play caution to the wind. Um, but I really still rate our four two three one. It has dominated and worked for us for so long. So it's not a formation where it's just like, that's it, we're changing because we haven't got out of the group stage for two years. We've got to remember we've been in two very hard groups as well. Um, it just, this could be another way to help us get more points in the Champions League to get out of the group stage and see what, what happens in Europe for the future. Um, 12 minutes in and here comes the first real highlight as Stein gets the ball and he will look to play it down the line for Wagner now. Wagner gets to the byline. Will he cut that one back? He will cut it, but only into the hands of the in Gravison, who's actually turning out to be a very good keeper for FH. He's got very good um, stats. Anyhow, Stephen wins the header from the long ball and Gunnison on the run. Still with Gunnison on the run. Lays it inside the Flamen. Flamen has put that one wide. He's been in good form, Flamen. And it's a great run from Gunnison. Gunnison has been um, dominating preseason, but what is new? He does dominate in the league. And I'll tell you what, he does quite well, obviously, in the um, Champions League as well. Very good player for us. Steven, though, going on a mazy run. Finds Stein inside. Still Stein. Still Stein. Stein's ball. Looks for Brooks and he loves the bomb on here on the left-hand side. It's a good cross back post. Gunnison heads down. Kane ends there. But Kane puts it into the side ending as well. It's just a knockdown. Couldn't get there in front of goals. Had to go right behind goals, unfortunately, for him. Um, but creating decent chances here at will. Um, Magnussen now. His ball down the line. We'll find Siggy, Fu uh, Siggy Fussen, was it? Or Siggy Gussen. Um, in the end, Alt steps in now. I just love looking at Holt's, uh, Alt's height and playing an actual centre-back. At centre-back, I'm um, not that like Yag Yag did anything wrong. I just feel like Yag Yag at um, six would be quite good. Um, another cross that's not completed again. We're not having the best of days out there, are we? Um, we are probing, though, and that's the main thing. Um, as Brian's ball inside now, we'll find Stein. It's a great ball. It's a great run. Stein finishes. The keeper goes down. And that is one new. It's one thing I want Stein to add to his game, especially for playing 4 2 3 1, is goals. Um, the youngster, he's obviously got great stati great stats for the league. He's four star, um, has potential to still grow at 19 or 18, um, and need him to start adding that to his game because he's definitely got the uh, finishing capabilities of 12 just or 11, um, but hasn't scored at all. Um, I was a little bit upset we blocked the move for AC Milan. We actually got like 2.2 mil bid, but we rejected that one because we need him for homegrown talent. As Kane's ball finds Gunnison, Gunnison cut back, Flamen there, 2 0. That is smart. It's good little football, that is, that is for sure. Highlighting that at 4 2 3 1 is definitely still our best formation um, and still a formation I quite like. And it's the football I like to play on Football Manager. This nice, fluid, controlled system where you just create and, you know, total football, so you say. Um, Gunnison there, Flamen, and there we go. So we're 2 0 up here after 26 minutes. Um, probably cruising through to another um, League Cup final, um, League Cup um, victory. Um, where we win it for like the third or fourth year in a row, I don't know. Stein's ball back post, Kanan's there. It's a great save from Ingi Versen there in goals. Kanan did have any corner to pick and didn't really pick one, but it was a good reverse hand save there from the keeper. Um, but Stein now out wide, he will find Steven. Steven usually leads to nothing this highlight. Stein does get a Brooks and probably was offside, and the ball gets tackled out for a throw in. I commentated the highlight for no apparent reason at all. Um, there we are though, and it's now Wagner on the ball, Stein now. 
Stein inside the Steven. Steven on a bookie. We might just get him off at half time so he doesn't get suspended. Brian now, his ball over the top. Looks for the men. It's a great touch. And in the end, the finish was poor, but the keeper's done well. Credit with credit, Stuart. It's a good save, but straight at the keeper, unfortunately, from Flamen. Um, his finishing's up to 13, which is quite good. Was at 11 for a long time. Um, turning into a great player, and you can see why people are like, bidding 7 mil for him right now. We do have a 22 mil release fee, and I don't really want to sell, especially this season. Um, trialling out 4 one 2 one 2 um, We do have good strikers um, now where we, if we do sell, it wouldn't be the worst in the world. It's great movement, though. And Brian's missed another easy chance. I'll tell you what. If we were finishing today, FH would be 5 mil down already. Um, there we are. Um, latest events. I don't know why that's up there. Maybe because of um, what happened in the Champions League when we last played. Getting the match that's up there. It's always good to look at. Absolutely dominating game. There's their first shot final in the 40-odd 40 40 minute. Um, there we go. And that's going to be half time here. It's 2 0 HK. Um, we will get Steven off. Um, everyone's pretty match fit in how, how everything's going. Just going to get Bojan on. Need Bojan to grow. Um, and grow into as good of a player as he can. We're just going to keep him there as a roaming playmaker as well. It doesn't bother me too much. Um, Bojan can play like sort of most things, just nothing really spectacular apart from centre mid. I don't ever use centre mids on the game. I always like to use them with a specific focus. Um, but yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, but Bojan should be okay out there, and he's growing slowly. Um, his potential is a little bit capped apparently. Um, but if anyone gets the four star, four star is really good for us. So it doesn't really matter. He's three star, so he's leading for the league. Um, in terms of depth or anything like that, in terms of big signings, I feel like we've now got a very good core young squad as um, Gunnison picks up a knock and Reverend Roger is going to come on and the, uh, well, I think his best role is Shadow, Shadow Striker, so we're just getting into the Shadow Striker role. Um, Bonnie Ian's about to come on as well in the 70th minute. We might just get him on now as well, Tito Bonnie Ian. We're allowed to make five changes. We will make all five. Um, we're going to get Yag Yag on here and we're going to put him in here for Brian. Um, and we'll just get him on a box-to-box -box centre mid. We could have put him at centre back just so he can keep growing there. But Yag Yag obviously playing centre defensive. I don't mind if he goes up the field as well. He can play everywhere, Yag Yag. It's quite good. Um, anywhere through the centre. And now playing this narrow system. Computer's having a moment there to generate this next highlight. It does happen a lot um, with Windows 10 and OBS. It seems to happen like once every hour or so. It's just lag. Um, it's a great save again by Ingi Varson as well. Um, apparently it would have been a foul anyway as Bonnie nudged someone, but the keeper wasn't to know. It was a great save. Um, and with the lucky last change, Lucas Lobat needs to make sure he doesn't get too unfit here. And he'll come on for Brooks, and who's once again proven that it's definitely the right choice to having um, him go out there and play as a starting left back. He's been quite good in pre-season as well. Um, everyone having a good game, and there we go. Should be just game over now, and we'll just get through to a comfortable 2 0 win. Should have been a lot more. This has been the story, though, pre season, which is slightly worrying me. We've dominated games and not put chance away. It's another game we should have won by about five, six, seven goals, and you know, we're only going to win 2 0 here, unless there's a late goal right now. But look, a win's a win. We've won the cup again. Um, much new. We won the pre season cup, which is counted as not a pre season competition, but an actual competition like the uh, League Cup in England. Um, but it's always good to win. Um, and to keep our win streak going in the, in the competition. There we are, celebrating. It's always good to see. Um, hopefully one day that is in the Champions League. That is obviously the goal and the aim. I am going to tell them congratulations. Very happy with the performance out there. The boys look absolutely... Lo they love it, um, which is quite good. No one played bad out there at all. 2-0 um, win over FH, which is always nice as well. We received 3.9k. Um, the last thing we're going to leave with is... I'm pretty sure if we go to um, the league table um, and we go to last season... IBV should be in the Champions League. No, it hasn't been drawn yet, but I'm pretty sure like IBV should have a Champions League spot and all these guys should be in like the Europa League um, because of how the league coefficients worked out. Obviously, that was in an episode or on stream. Um, but I'm pretty sure now that we've got um, those people going to be in the league. When the draw comes out, I'm going to check that. We'll put that into a YouTube episode as well um, just to see who's in Europe and how well they do because it's very interesting to see. Um, obviously, if everyone in Europe will grow the... Um, competition of Iceland a lot as well and we'll get closer to that TV deal as well so more high quality players can come into the league and really grow Icelandic football as a whole well that's going to be the end of this episode guys if you enjoyed it please give it a like and subscribe to the channel um, link in the description below if you haven't watched any previous episodes there's now 31 this will be 32 um, so they're all in a playlist um, this episodes I recommend like episodes 25 17 21 they're all very quite good episodes to go watch and quite enjoyable. You know, it's a little bit of comedy because they get quite mad or, you know, the games are quite intense and hyped. Um, 
and there we go. And there's some you know crazy football and crazy goals along the way as well. So please go back and watch all the other episodes if you have time to. Um, there was a good keep on in the background as well. Um, once again, if you haven't checked me out on Twitch, I do stream on Twitch quite a fair bit when I can and do have free time. Um, with soccer season ending here in Australia in about five weeks' time, I'll be streaming a lot more after that in between work. It's only work and, you know, I still have full-time coaching where I coach in an academy, but that's only twice a week. So that would mean that I have more time than the stream at night and all that sort of stuff. So the streaming's about to ramp up in about five weeks' time. I'll really get into the save and really pump out a lot of seasons in very quick success succession so if you're interested in watching this stream there'll be a link in the description below we do do most champions league group stage games live on stream and if it gets interesting we do do live stream as well as record for youtube as well so you won't miss anything on the youtube either this is going to be damien signing off here though ladies and gentlemen hopefully you enjoyed the episode and goodbye from wherever you're from have a good day or night